Look at that. See the difference? See all that water there? Look at that. Look how smooth it is. It's all nice and smooth in here. See all that pixelization, all that noise in there? That all disappears. Doesn't it look pretty in the pool itself? See, they've got all the ripples there. And we've got nice smooth lines. Look at that. From my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Pride The Mavic Pro oh, look, you got a broken little wing Got some of these I love this little thing because it can go anywhere And take it anywhere Like we took it to Bali And um, just literally threw it in our bag no, not, not literally, I placed it gently <laughs> It's probably why I break that Its advantage is its size, of course um, The downside is the size of its camera it's tiny little camera, tiny little sensor. Of course, that means if there's any kind of low level light, then the sensor uh, picks up lots of noise and it becomes a very hard camera to take photos with. Now, it's a neat little trick that you can use to compensate for that, and I'll show you how. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to shoot in a burst of photos. Now the Mavic has an option for a burst of 3, 5 and 7. I always shoot with 7. Uh, the more the merrier because then you've got more to choose from. Uh, but it doesn't matter how many as long as you've got uh, multiples. Essentially you're taking multiple photos all at once and we're going to stack those and layer them on top of each other. Idea being that if there is a single pixel in one photo that doesn't have the information because the sensor couldn't pick it up on time, then the next photo might have it and then the photo after that might have it. Essentially we're going to layer the photos together to grab all the information from all pixels or little bits of the world that we need to capture. All right now here's a whole bunch of photos that I took recently down at Bondi uh, and as you can see the first thing I did is after I've imported them is there's this neat little feature in, uh, in Lightroom where you select them and you can go stacking and then auto stack by capture time. So essentially go with that, pick a couple of seconds because essentially when you do a burst it takes all the photos in a, in a second. So they're all, then you do that and then they're all together and the, yeah, they're all stacked together, uh, which makes it a little easier to find what you're after. Now, essentially what I do is I go through and I'll do my initial edits to each of the photos. So here's an example of this one here. You can see down here, uh, there's a, a reasonable amount of detail, but as we zoom in, you can see all this pixelization around here. Uh, this is all grainy and horrible. Uh, and there's not a lot of um, definition around here. Now, this is the end result. As you can see, it's much cleaner, much neater. There's a lot more definition. Uh, there's a lot more definition in these lines. And you end up with this movement. Now, whether you want the movement or not is then up to you. You can, there are ways to then take that out. That's one I've prepared earlier. Let's look at one I haven't. Okay, here's a similar one. I haven't done anything with this one yet. There's the seven photos. Now, if we flick through them, you'll see that there's a slight amount of movement in each of them. First thing we're gonna do is just run through the seven photos and see what's changed. Now, I can see that there's some movement in the waves, of course, uh, there's a bit of movement in the pool, and there you can see the car is moving back and forth there. Now, that's all gonna give a pretty cool effect. It's gonna give that sort of long exposure uh, look, um, which is good. Uh, but the one that I'm sort of looking out for is how much tilt there is, how much movement is in the camera. Uh, and it's very, very minimal, but you can see that there's just a tiny bit of movement tilting slightly, um, which is fine, and the, there's an easy way to combat that. Okay, the first thing we do, select your seven photos all at once, right click on them and go edit in open layers as Photoshop. Now you can also go up here and go photo edit in Layers as Photoshop does the same thing, but I just find this easier, I always go this way. Open as layers in Photoshop. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up Photoshop, it's gonna create one file, but it's gonna put each of these images into layers. Essentially what we're gonna do then is align those layers and then compile them all as one layer. All right, once we've got each of our layers in there, select all of them, go edit, Auto align layers. I just usually go auto. Auto always seems to work because there's not much moving here. Now the speed of this will be dependent on the size of your files, how big they are, and also of course how many calculations it needs to do based on how much is moving within the frame. Now in this particular shot, 
there's probably almost half, uh, somewhere between a third and half of the image will actually be moving. Um, because it may not look like much, but all this water over on the left hand side is moving enough that it's at least a pixel different. Okay, so that's finished that and you can see around the edges here, there's a little bit of movement and that's not too bad. Um, have a look at this previous one, you can see that that's way out of whack, so there's something wrong there. This one here that there's plenty of there, so it looks okay. Now you can just turn off the layers individually uh, and go through them and have a look, make sure they all line up. Look for something that's not moving. Now, once you've done that, a little safety trick here, I usually then go and duplicate the first layer and then switch it off. Now, the, I'll show you why in a second. Now, grab all of those, select them, and go layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. Now, this is essentially gonna combine all of those layers together as one object. Okay, and then go back to layer, smart objects, stack mode, mean, mean. Now what that's gonna do is it's looking for the mean between the images. Now, you can see there, now I've got some blurriness here, I've got a lot of blurriness there, I've got a lot more detail. Now I'm gonna undo that for a second, and then I'm gonna zoom in down here, and then redo it, just to show you. Look at that. See the difference? See all that water there? Look at that, look how smooth it is. It's all nice and smooth in here. See all that pixelization, all that noise in there, that all disappears, doesn't it look pretty? In the pool itself, see they've got all the ripples there. And we've got nice smooth lines, look at that. Now, the nice bit is you get all this, um, all the people moving here suddenly go all blurry because you get a nice bit of movement there. So that, I'm actually quite happy with that, I like that. Now I like the movement, I think the movement looks nice um, because it adds, uh, it adds that sort of long exposure look to it. Now if you didn't want that movement, there is a way to take that out. Save that file, go back to Lightroom, and there it is, it's a way to go. So there's your seven files, and then it appears here next to it as a, as a new file. You'll notice it's a TIFF file now, instead of, uh, instead of whatever raw image came out of your camera. Uh, and then you can start your editing. Um, now, if you don't want that movement in there, if something is moving and it shouldn't be moving, say the car, like if this was an image around, yeah, specifically around cars and road and so on, and you didn't want the car moving, uh, there's a way to fix that. Okay, so these waves, say if we want these waves to be still. This is why we duplicated that layer in the first place. So first thing we're gonna do is tick that, and you can see it goes back to the original. So that's just the one layer sitting on top of the other layer, so you can't now see our merged layers. Create a mask, that's all black. Change that to all be black. So now everything is on that layer is now hidden. Now all you do is go back to your brush, Go back to your white, and then just paint in what you want to be nice and clear. Essentially, you're making just this part of the image visible to the other layers. And there you have it. And so, say if we want that car to be visible. Do the same thing. Go for a smaller brush. Set my hardness up. My opacity. And you essentially make it visible again. And there you go. And that's it. Save that. Actually, I like the movement in the wave, so I'm not going to do that bit. But then, of course, once you've done that, go back. There's your file. Now that you now have like a, a fair abundance of files here. So you've got the seven raw files and now you've got this TIFF file, which is like 500 meg. So that's sort of the downside is you end up with a massive file. But um, if you're worried about file sizes, do your editing and then save it as a DNG or save it as a high res JPEG. Uh, and then you can get rid of your TIFF file or you can get rid of your, um, your raw files instead if you prefer. I generally, generally the raw files are a bit smaller than the, um, the end result file, but it's up to you, whatever you prefer. Going back to this, of course, all your editing that you've done previously is now incorporated into the file. So 
it goes back to being a flat file again, right? So there's no editing has been done to this file. So now you can do your editing on top of that. Now I always found that, that because now I've got a little more information in there, I can kind of push things a little harder than I could before with the original raw file. So you can be a little more aggressive with your, with your colors and your, and your darks and so on. Push the clarity up a bit more, push our vibrance up. So you can now see we're starting to get a lot more, a lot more movement in here. We've got a lot more that we can push around with our, with our colors. Flatten that out a bit. Make the sun a bit brighter. Now I kind of like the color of the pool. It's funny because this, people think you're, you're changing the color of the pool. I literally haven't, as you can see, I haven't adjusted any colors, but I can. There we go, subtlety is the key. Uh, now you notice the lens, that's what I was talking about, lens correction now doesn't work because it's a TIFF file. Uh, it doesn't have the information in it anymore. Push our sharpening up a little bit, just a little bit, not too crazy. All right, that's nice. I think that'll do it. There's a comparison. That's the before and that's the after. So there you go, I hope that little trick helps. Give us a like if it does. Um, see, you don't need to buy a Mavic 2 now, do you? Of course, there are many, many reasons why you do, so yeah, don't let me stop you. Look at that, and that poor little thing. Sad thing is, I actually broke that just putting it into the bag. Anyway, stay safe, have fun, see you next time.